without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are helpless to do anything to transform this world. Without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no strength to turn the heart of the sinner toward the cross. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no demonstrations of miracles. You don't know what it's like to be in that room back there saying, Lord, if you don't move, I've got nothing for them. I could stand up here and talk for a few hours, but then all of you would go home saying, we could have got that on the podcast. <laughs> preaching is good, and preaching lays the foundation for the move of the Holy Spirit, so don't throw out your notes and call it a move of God. But without the power of the Holy Spirit moving in this room, without the power of the Holy Spirit sweeping across this room through that camera, touching everyone watching live, there is nothing that can be done for the sick except for what can naturally be done in the medical realm. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no deliverance from demonic bondages. So I want to show you who the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit does, and then I want to show you how to see his power activated in your life. But we must understand, first and foremost, that the Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a person with a mind, will, with emotions. Ephesians tells us, grieve not the Spirit. How can I grieve an it? I used to imagine that the Holy Spirit was a force or an energy or an essence or a presence or a dynamic about the room, an atmosphere perhaps, something you felt, something that maybe came in a chill or an electric sensation or a heat that you sense come upon your body. And growing up in church, I had prayed to the Father, I had prayed to the Son, and I never really wanted to address the Holy Spirit for fear that I might commit some type of misdemeanor idolatry. Perhaps if I address the Holy Spirit, God will be angry with me. You have to realize he is a person. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 is perhaps one of the most astonishing scriptures in the sense that it tells us of this fellowship that we have with the Holy Spirit. We have fellowship with him. This is communion or friendship or shared time. I can be a friend of the Holy Spirit? That's so powerful because this means that he walks with me. This means that he goes with me wherever I go. This means that when you're driving to work, when you're going to school, when you're sitting in church, when you're at home enjoying time with your family, when you're sharing a meal with friends, the presence of the Holy Spirit can be there among you. You don't have to enjoy this life in spite of the Spirit. You can enjoy this life with Him. And He adds a beauty to every aspect of life that would be lacking otherwise. He is God with us. Consider the fact that God the Father sits upon a throne. And Christ the Son is seated at His right hand. Where then is the Holy Spirit? Well, He's in you. The Holy Spirit dwells with me. What does the Holy Spirit look like? Go look in the mirror. That's his body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And you are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. You were purchased with the price. His presence, his glory dwells in me. I don't have to go searching for atmospheres I am an atmosphere. I don't have to go searching for an encounter. I live in an encounter with God. How does this look in our lives practically? How does this change the dynamics of everyday living? To be a carrier of God's glory. I'm a carrier of his glory. 
I walk, the Holy Spirit walks. My presence and his presence become one. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Wherever I go, he goes. Whatever I do, he do, does. Wherever I touch, he touches. He brings that miracle working power wherever you walk. Do you realize that when you walk into rooms, demons start to tremble? When you walk into rooms, sickness starts to lose its grip on people. When you walk into rooms, you shift the atmosphere, exposing every spirit. You, you realize that when you walk with the spirit, Nothing can touch you. Not outside of God's will. Nothing can touch you. So what does the Holy Spirit do? Zechariah 12.10 calls him the spirit of prayer and supplication. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us the desire to pray. Recognize, please, that all desires that come from you that are spiritual come from the Spirit. You would have no desires for the things of God were it not for the Holy Spirit. We imagine that the Holy Spirit is a reward for the super spiritual. No such group. There's the surrendered and the unsurrendered. The truly spiritual and the pseudo spiritual. Those who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. They walk in the mystic of it but they don't have the character of Christ. So... The Holy Spirit is the one who births the desire to pray. He causes you to be drawn to the heavenly. He invites you into the depths of God to know him. He gives you on a daily basis a royal invitation. Come and know me. Come and pray. When you go to pray, do you realize that you're acting on the desire the Spirit gave you? And that without the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't even want to pray. This is why it amazes me when people come before God wondering if he really wants to accept them. They say things like, well, I want to talk to God. I want to pray. I want to go into his presence. I want to sit with him. But I don't know if he really wants to see me right now. The fact that you want to means he does too. The fact that you want to means it's an invitation. Therefore, the desire to pray is itself an invitation to prayer. When you sense that drawing of the Holy Spirit, he begins to pull you into the depths of God that you've not known before. There is no man or woman, no matter how anointed they are, who knows the way into the presence of God. Only the Holy Spirit knows the way into the presence of God. And if you will surrender to him, he'll take you right in. This is the difference, church. This is the difference. Because I don't want to live my life with the form of godliness. I don't want to live my life with a flawed character. I don't want to live my life in deception. I want to live my life clean. I want to live my life with power. I want to live my life before God, knowing that I belong to him and knowing that he is pleased with the way I walk. You want that, then you want the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the breath behind the movement of your spirituality. The Holy Spirit is the fire of that love for Christ in your heart. The Holy Spirit is the one who drives you into the depths of God. The Holy Spirit is the key to true and powerful Christian living. If you're tired of compromise... If you're tired of sitting on the edge, if you're tired of going in cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle, wondering what's wrong with you, then it's time to surrender to the Holy Ghost. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.